Welcome to BBTV Today's Answers, coming to you from the UK studios of BizVision. I'm your host, Malcolm Gallagher. This is the third video in the set of three with the Amazon business expert and author, Tomer Rabinovich. Welcome back to complete your trilogy, Tomer. <laughs> Hi, Malcolm. Very good to be here. Yes. Uh, uh, listen, I, I just love your book because it's very, very motivational. You know, lots of motivation in it. That's not just about being on Amazon and a lot of truths as well uh, that to make people think very carefully about the product that they want to sell. But it also gives you excellent advice on moving from being a seller to an Amazon business owner and then moving that through to selling the business. So can you give us a taster of this, including the difference between a seller and a business owner, building the business, and why the goal of selling the business? Yeah, so when you start a business, I think, like for most people, right? When I started Amazon, I thought, this is going to be great. I'm going to work wherever I want. I'm going to work whenever I want. I'm going to have the freedom I want in the last all the time, the time after with my uh, now uh, beloved wife and kids. And when you start out a, a new business, and I had a day job while I was running this business, and very quickly after I quit my job, I found myself working a lot harder in my business than I did ever before. And I think that happens in a lot of businesses. I think that's a very common trend that you see. And that that happens for a variety of reasons. But what happened with me was I decided to really try and see if I can automate this business as much as possible and remove myself from the equation so you can you really have three ways to go. One way is to go bankrupt and quit and stop yeah. running the business. Uh, that happens uh, very often as well. One option is to sell the business, and that's kind of your way out. And the third option is to automate your business and have systems and people in place and to basically support and help scale the business and kind of remove yourself from it as much as possible so you're not involved in the day-to-day -day as much. So... Those are basically the three options, I believe, of any business out there. And you need to decide where is it that you're going over time. And I believe that a good and healthy business needs to be ready to be sold because you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And that's just a healthy way to run a business. It's kind of like if you want to go into a relationship at some point, let's say you're single and you want to go into a relationship, you need to, get, you need to be ready for it, right? You don't know when that's going to come. Uh, but you need to be ready uh, when it does uh, come your way. So you need to be, I don't know, uh, clean uh, and healthy and happy and and so on, right? So that's the same thing with your business. It's always need to be ready to be sold. And it needs to be organized and structured in a way that if you would want to transfer it over to somebody tomorrow, they could take over. Mm. You know, when people are looking at businesses, let's say I'm, I'm wanting to buy... Um, a warehouse, a business that's worried about warehousing. Um, I'm looking at, I don't want it to be full. I want it to be just to the level where I feel that if I buy it, I can put more into it. So how do you show that within an Amazon business? Yeah, so a lot of sellers, what happens, a lot of Amazon sellers, what happens when they want to exit, they try to maximize everything out, right? They try to sell the products they can under brand. They try to expand to other Amazon marketplaces like in Europe and Canada and really max out everything and have the perfect images. What I tell all of them is you need to leave something for the buyer. You need to yes. leave something yeah. for the buyer and also show them how they could grow the brand. So when I'm working with a seller to help them scale to an exit, what I'm doing is I'm telling them, look, let's build a product development pipeline to show what are the next 10, 20 products that this brand can launch. And actually going that route, not just saying it, but actually executing on it and always showing that the brand is on, on growth trajectory, right? So let's say you want to sell your brand in 12 months. So a lot of sales, what they do is they stop everything. They don't want to launch anything. They don't want to do take any more risks. But who says they will actually be able to sell in 12 months from now? So I told them, look, just it's business as usual. You know, you always mm. want to grow. You always want to scale. You always want to launch more products. Um, so that way, when the opportunity presents itself and you actually are ready to sell and you talk to potential buyers, they can look at your business and seeing that it's actually on an, a growing trend, right? That That's what you are selling them on. The, you're not selling them on just the past. You're also selling them on the future. So they actually see that if they give you, let's say a Forex multiple, that means that let's say you made a profit of a million dollars in the past 12 months, they give you a $4 million exit. 
they don't want to wait four years to get their money back. They want to get yeah. it back in two. So you need to show them how they're going to double the profit of this business very quickly. And that needs to be very clear to them what can still be done in your business. Uh, so I specifically leave a lot of gaps in the business I consult for out to kind of, and, and things that I think will take a lot more investment or resources and time uh, to get to that point. So let's just leave that out for the potential buyers. Mm. Now, you talk a lot in your book about branding, but I have to say to you, just reflecting on the things I bought of, of Amazon, and I'm in Prime, you know, and I think he's knocking on my door every day. But um, I, I don't seem to feel that I bought anything branded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, brand is a, is a misconception, I think. Again, from the Amazon seller perspective, they think, oh, I have a brand, right? People buy my brand. They're not buying your brand. They're buying the Amazon brand. Yeah. So the customer is not your customer. Even when a customer buys my product, I don't get their email address. The email address is kept by Amazon. I cannot message that customer whenever I want. It's not my customer. It's Amazon's customer. What a brand really is, if you ask me, a brand is a niche. When I think about a brand on Amazon, I think about a niche. So if I want to sell, doesn't matter what product it is, let's say a yoga ball, for example. If you mm -hmm. type in yoga ball on Amazon, there are a million yoga balls on Amazon. But if I want to go into a very small niche, it might be yoga ball for pregnant women, for example. So that is a very small niche. But then I can have my main image, my listing, my product. I can have a booklet and the videos showing how, to, how a pregnant woman should use this yoga ball during her pregnancy and really targeting those specific keywords, just targeting the pregnancy aspect and just targeting that small niche. And when you buy my product, you bought it from a brand focusing on pregnant women, right? That's the brand you bought into, but you still bought it on Amazon. So I think that's the main difference. And that's like the, the mindset that the seller needs to have that they're leveraging Amazon's brand to sell their products on the platform, but they can definitely have a brand. Like, let's say you like my product, I can still sell you, I can decide if it's either going to be a yoga brand or it's going to be a pregnant women brand. So if it's, let's say, pregnant women, I can start selling supplements that are for pregnant women. And then Amazon's going to help me upsell and cross-sell between my different products. Or I decide it's a yoga brand and I can sell uh, yoga for kids and yoga for men, yoga for women and build like an entire yoga brand around it instead. So mm. that's what I mean by an Amazon brand. Excellent, excellent. Thanks, Tom. Let's give our audience details of your URL. Um, obviously, viewers, you can see it on the screen behind me. But for listeners, it's all the W's, all the W's dot join top dog dot com. Join top dog dot com. Now, Thomas' book is called Ride the Amazon Wave, the Pro Seller's Guide to Private Label Success. And naturally, it's available on Amazon. But go to Tomer's website for details of the many other places you can buy it. And when you do get the book, by the way, there's some fascinating things in there, including you can go to a particular website because you bought the book and, you, and you've got the QR code to take you there. And um, it's Tomer's what he calls Breaker's website, where there's a huge amount of extra help, uh, superb help there. Now, I have to honestly admit that until I read Tomer's book, I had let my negative feelings about Amazon outweigh my positive ones. I should stop reading other people's critiques, shouldn't I? Quite simply, I hadn't got my mindset right, but I'm on my way now. And you can too start by getting Tomer's book. Thanks, Tomer, for a great BBTV Global Trilogy. Yeah, thank you so much. And for those who are going to buy the book, please do not forget to leave a review.